Khomeini died in 1989, shortly after the war ended. He promised democracy, but essentially had become the next dictator. Although he improved literacy and much needed health care for the masses, he also imposed censorship, violently crushed political dissent, and attacked women's rights. Instead of the Savak, the people now had the Revolutionary Guard to fear. Since then, Iran has been an oppressive theocracy. Khomeini was replaced by Khamenei, who remains supreme leader to this day. Yes, I I think Iranian government is dangerous. It's dangerous mainly to people living inside Iran. Um, They've been oppressing people. Uh, The current government is uh, kind of a dictatorship. And, uh, you know, they've done a lot of bad things to Iranian people. Iran is an Islamic republic that suppresses women, it suppresses um, uh, movements for free speech. It, it's, it's, you know, an, it's an oppressive government. And it is, absolutely. And U.S. intervention is going to make it worse. Um, it's made it worse in Iraq, it's made it worse in other contexts, and it's absolutely going to make it worse in Iran. The United States does not oppose the Islamic Republic because it's reactionary or repressive. All we need to do is look across the Persian Gulf to Saudi Arabia and understand that the United States has no trouble supporting reactionary, oppressive theocracies as long as they do the U.S.'s bidding. Uh, and we've seen in Iraq, did, did the United States bring freedom and liberation to Iraq? No, they succeeded in killing an estimated 650,000 people, making refugees out of 3 million, uh, destroying the country, and actually strengthening the hand of uh, Islamic fundamentalist Shias who want to impose their own theocracy uh, in Iraq. So it's increased the nightmare uh, of the Iraqi people. The Islamic Republic is a repressive regime. I was in Iran in 1979 and 1980 and saw this uh, Islamic theocracy being consolidated. And many of my friends were killed or tortured, put in prison because they were secular uh, opponents of both imperialism but also of religious rule. Uh, Certainly women are being... uh, you know, mistreated and held in a subservient position. Science is undermined by this sort of theocratic rule. Now, having said that, so this isn't a regime that I like, but having said that, uh, I'm still fully opposed to any U.S. attack on Iran. The fact that the Islamic Republic is a reactionary, repressive regime does not give the United States the right to attack Iran. The future of Iran should be determined by the Iranian people. Iran is, uh, uh, has a uh, the democracy uh, the, at, the, at the grassroots and is very strong. It's just like um, a coil under of uh, the, the ashes right now, that it's, 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 it's basically it's about to become a massive uh, uh, movement. And interesting is that the, 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 the women's uh, movement is very strong against inequalities in Iran and also uh, against uh, gender apartheid. The student movement is very strong. The workers move, but the workers movement also is going very strong, getting unions and um, they, they they basically intellectuals, writers, poets. It, it's so vibrant that you know, like you don't see this kind of grassroots uh, movement for democracy in any other neighboring uh, country. So, once the threat of bombing Iran. Uh, comes from uh, administration at this stage, it basically uh, allows radicals uh, that are uh, basically um, a very small percentage that holding to the power to clamp down on all these movements. And what it does happen that with threat of bombing, the, the, the movement stops and um, the, the, the repression becomes much larger and um, does not allow this grassroots to develop properly. What I'm uncertain about is how we can best help people inside Iran uh, to force the government to be more democratic 
and uh, you know how we can facilitate that process. Uh, that's a very difficult question. I know different people have different uh, answers and different thinkings, uh, but uh, you don't want to let the government in Iran to have a free hand to do whatever they want against people. But on the other hand, uh, democracy is not something that you can force from outside. And, uh, you know, if the uh, there's a very strong democracy movement inside Iran. Um, so if it looks like that people from outside are helping them, then the government will seize that opportunity to make it look like they're just foreign puppets and it will crack down on them. So you cannot directly support them. But uh, so that's basically that's the difficult question and how best we can uh, do something to help people inside Iran. Khomeini did form a new kind of government with some elected offices, but still with himself as the supreme leader, the head of the government. There is an elected parliament called the Majlis and an elected president, but their democratic functions are limited as all candidates and all laws must be approved by the Guardian Council. The Guardian Council has 12 members and half are clerics appointed by the Supreme Leader, who has the final say on all important matters. The job of the Guardian Council is to guard the country against efforts to undermine the ideals of the revolution. They normally prevent any reformers from being elected, but the strength of the democracy movement culminated in 1997 and a reformer was elected. From 1997 to 2005, a reformer named Khatami was the president of Iran. 70% of Iran is 30 years old or younger, due to Khomeini's urging people to have children at the start of the revolution and losing many of the older generation in the Iran-Iraq war. He won the election, in large part due to support from women and the country's youth, who pressed their parents to vote for him. He wanted to return rights to women, and he rejected the idea that the Muslim world and the West must have a clash of civilizations, promoting instead a dialogue among civilizations. And like the U.S., the reformers can be undermined by more powerful interests. Khatami's reforms mostly failed, and when the conservatives used political assassinations of students and writers to destabilize the reformists, the people took to the streets in protest, and Khatami's response was silence and deference to the conservatives. His supporters began to turn against him. Khatami's reformist presidency was also undermined by the U.S., despite gestures of goodwill towards America from the people and the government of Iran. Iran has the most pro-American uh, public in the region, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, if you remember, after September 11th, uh, people just went to the streets and they had candlelight vigils uh, for victims of the terrorist attacks. Uh, so people in Iran really like Americans. In addition to candlelight vigils in the streets of Tehran, Iran's supreme leader condemned the mass killings of 9-11 and compared them to the genocide in Hiroshima and Bosnia. Then, when the U.S. invaded Afghanistan, Iran had a mutual interest for stability. They helped to oust the Taliban and to get the warlords that controlled the country outside of the capital to cooperate with the new U.S.-backed president, Hamid Karzai. Indeed, without Iran's tacit approval, the Afghani government could not take hold. 
In 2002, when Bush named Iran as part of the axis of evil, it came as a shock to Iran. In 2003, when Bush invaded Iraq, it was obvious where things were headed, and it was less of a surprise that he rejected Iran's offer to give in to U.S. demands on all outstanding issues in exchange for guarantees of security. The Bush administration has no interest in a more democratic Iran. If they wanted to help Iran's democracy movement, they would have helped the reformers by accepting the offer, and they certainly wouldn't have designated Iran as part of the axis of evil. 